Okay, good morning class. <laughs> uh, today we will start with the review of interesting cases. My name is Carla Chavez. I am a third year resident of Diagnostic Imaging at the University Hospital, Dr. Jose Luterio Gonzalez. And my patient uh, was a 30 year old male, began his condition two months ago with hyperexia, general malaise, goes to the hospital for edema of lower limbs in the weeks before he had no observed fever, flu, and other uh, respiratory or digestive symptoms. Okay, the most relevant findings uh, at the laboratorial, laboratorial data were arterial liver enzymes, high HDL, HIV positive, and normal smear. Um, in the ultrasound uh, the, to the alter liver enzymes, uh, we, have, uh, we can find uh, multiple liver masses, which were round, hypochoic, will definite. At the color uh, and power doppler, we find little no, uh, to no uh, blow flow. In the rest of the abdominal ultrasound, um, the kidneys did no shoulds, shoulder alterations, and there were no relevant findings. Uh, uh, gallbladder, pancreas, and spleen with no, with no ultrasound alterations. Okay. Um, and with the CT and uh, the thorax level, we find no abnormalities in the heart and the mediastine without alterations. We can observe in the tomography uh, hepatomegaly with diffuse fatty infiltration and multiple round masses will definite uh, which are hyperdense to the liver parenchyma. Okay, uh, which, uh, uh, bueno, which are hyperdense to the liver parenchyma in the CT. Uh, uh, okay. The histopathological diagnosis, high grade large B cells node Hodgkin lymphoma. Six months after treatment with uh, uh, chemotherapy, there's uh, no residual disease. Okay. Mm, the diagnostic is um, the term extranodal lymphoma refers not Hodgkin lymphoma or not Hodgkin uh, or Hodgkin disease in places other than lymph nodes, spleen, thymus, tonsils, and, and pharyngeal lymphatic rings. And primary lymphoma is confined to a single organ and adjacent lymph nodes. And secondary lymphoma, involvement of different ganglia. And to roll out, to roll out lymph node involvement is planic. The incidence is 12.2 cases per 100,000 inhabitants. Only 30% have, have an extra nodal primary. And the primary hepatic lymphoma, uncommon primary hepatic tumor. The pathogenesis is unknown, uh, but is the um, related to the hepatitis and HIV and Epstein Barr virus. Um, the, the clinical presentation in um, and, and, and 
50% uh, fifth decade men's and uh, 70 abdominal 70% abdominal pain and 10% B symptoms. CT method of choice diagnosis. And, um, the liver biopsy is a primordial test to confirm the diagnosis and absence of planning hematologic and bone marrow and involvement. However, cases have been reported with iliar ganglion involvement. The radiological findings, uh, we can see uh, focal lesions, single, multiple, diffuse, and uh, hypoechoic, homogeneous, and red enhancement hypovascular parenchyma. The findings uh, are not uh, mm, specific and can mimic other lesions. Mm, as, mm, metastasis, liver abscess, hemangiomas, and focal fat infiltra infiltration and liver cysts. And the, and the definite diagnosis is histological. Remember that we can see different presentations depending of, uh, on the primary tumor. And metastasis uh, and primary st uh, cancer st history. The liver abscesses, the patient has uh, acute symptoms with systemic alteration. And the liver kist is homogeneous, acoustic reinforcement, thin or imperceptible walls. Thank you. Okay, my name is, uh, good morning, my name is Cesar Tamez. I'm R R2 of radiology. Uh, I continue with the next case. Uh, the next case is a male of 45 uh, years old to come to ER because he has a, a ataxia and a miparesi, left imiparesi. Um, the treating doctor requests an MRI to the arrival of the ER and this is we this is the thing that we will see. In the parietal lobe, we see a restriction uh, zone that have a, a MRI transformation, and this was a diagnostic of ischemic vascular event with MRI tra transformation. Uh, in the uh, MRI angiography, we see uh, that is important thing when you report the case, uh, uh, both carotid arteries protrude, the medial, uh, uh, protrude medially into the retropharyngeal space. We see both uh, in the retropharyngeal space uh, together, and this is a coronal reconstru reconstruction that uh, where I see the same thing: um, bilateral ectasic carotids and how they protrude medially in the retropharyngeal space. Okay. Okay, both carotids uh, medially in the retropharyngeal space, and this is an uh, anatomic variant of Calet kissing carotids. Uh, kissing carotids is uh, also Calet retropharyngeal carotid, carotid transpos transpositation, or medialocyte carotid. It's when one of both carotid arteries protrudes medially into retropharyngeal space. This is the normal uh, form of the carotids, and this is the uh, when they protrude medially in the retropharyngeal space. If you can see in this uh, diagram, uh, you can see how they are lateral to the to thyroid and lateral to the pharynx. So, uh, the theology is for arteriosclerosis, uh, aster arteri arteriosclerosis causes that uh, is fusiform enlar enlargement and tortuosity of carotids uh, in, this, in association with chronic hypertension. 
or may be due to failure of complete descendant of dorsal aortic roots into chest with persistent embryologic angulation of carotid in children. This is a congenital form. The signs of, of symptoms, uh, the, more of, the most of the times is, in, is an incidental finding or neck in CT or MRI. Uh, if it's symptomatic, we can see a pulsated retropharyngeal uh, or retrotonsillar mass. Uh, other symptoms may potentiate obstructive sleep apnea for the masses of the retropharyngeal or global sensation. Uh, in this image, we can see the retropharyngeal space. You can see here a uh, mass to pulsatile, pulsatile mass, and a diagnostic differential of uh, mass in the retropharyngeal space is two uh, uh, that you can see, like here. You see is the, the, the bigger space on the retropharyngeal space. Here, uh, increase to the retropharyngeal space. Here you see the same uh, increase of the retropharyngeal space uh, with ectasic carotid. For this reason, it's important to, when you see a, uh, a mass in the retropharyngeal space, is make an enhanced CT. The age uh, increasing incidence with the older age, except in the congenital ways. Uh, in the epidemiology, it's a common pseudolation. An older po population uh, is important. Uh, it's important to implic implication for anesthesiology when performing a transoral block of glossopharyngeal nerve in pharynx or in a difficult transient in intubation because you can make an hemorrhage. Uh, risk for CI injury during, during pharyngeal surgeries like tonsillectomy, adenectomy, or velopharyngeal narrowing. This is the important thing for, of this variant because you, you can uh, make an important hemorrhage and complicate this, the cirrhosis. Uh, some, some tips, uh, ectasic carotid artery is differential diagnosis of a paravertebral soft tissue uh, widening widening of lateral plant film, like you see in this thing, that uh, were increased the soft tissue in the retropharyngeal space, so this is a different diagnosis. Um, it, uh, we have big difference between clinical suspicion, suspicion of bacterial tumor or radiolux impression, tortus, tortusia. Uh, Radiolysts must, uh, must recognize no surreal nature of this lesion. Important to report in patient undergoing pharyngeal surgery to avoid iatrogenic carotid injury. This is the important thing. If, uh, that it's important to, to don't make iatrogenic carotid injury. Uh, what we know, what we're gonna see in the CT. In the CT in actual, we see a round or in coronal tubular enhancing retropharyngeal structure. Contiguous axial image reveal structure as uh, uh, carotid artery. Usually, internal carotid is suprayoidic neck, and usually common carotid is an infrayoidic neck. Medialized external carotid is retropharyngeal, is very red variant. It uh, could be unilateral or bilateral. When it's bilateral, it's called kissing carotid. CT and geography on MRI and geography easily establishes diagnostic. But angiography is not necessary to confirm diagnosis. Um, CT and geography in coronal reconstructions best define nature of retropharyngeal carotid and tortal vessel often is distal common carotid, more proximal internal carotid. In MRI, in T1 uh, sequence, uh, we see a wrong low signal retropharyngeal carotid and T2 uh, a wrong low signal carotid secondary to high velocity flow avoid. In MRI and geography, and geography uh, in coronal Reconstruction is the best to delineate retropharyngeal artery as carotid, ar uh, as carotid ar artery, like in this image. The different diagnosis uh, is a carotid aneurysma, pseudonarysma, and we have a story of trauma or carotid dissection, a pulsated mass, or a complex carotid space mass. Uh, the other diagnos differential diagnosis is carotid body paraganglioma, that is a pulsated angle of the mass, uh, mandible mass, and enhances mass of carotid bifurcation. That is like in this image. 
the only water. Okay, okay. Uh, one of the thing of uh, carotid body paranglioma is to separate both uh, carotid arteries, and this is uh, to help to help to diagnosis. In uh, the uh, secondary is the history of trauma. Thank you. Uh, okay, my name is Adrián Palomino Salas, and I show you the next case. Uh, correspond a uh, 23 years, uh, years old female patient uh, who arrives to ER department uh, with a uh, two second postpartum week, was admitted uh, to the obstetric department with a one week uh, history with fever and moderately painful uh, irredu irreductible lump in the left uh, groin and labial, labial major. <coughs> uh, we perform a, ultrasound, a public ultrasound and uh, we see an um, enlargement uh, uterus uh, secondary to the physiological uh, porperium uh, and longitudinal imaging and transversal imaging. And uh, uh, we can see the image um, uh, hypochoic um, that correspond to the uh, fallopian tube barrier, uh, that uh, enlargement and uh, wall thickening uh, and filled with fluid. <coughs> Uh, and uh, this see uh, in, in the, this image uh, the uh, fallopian tubar left uh, left fallopian tubar uh, with a, a thickened wall and a filled with fluid. Um, the same in these images, and uh, with color Doppler, we see an uh, increased uh, 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 flow blow. Uh. Okay. And uh, uh, we realize a CT scan without uh, enhancement, and uh, we see the same uh, things: uh, uterus enlargement, and uh, the fallopian tube uh, of the left side uh, with a, a thin, uh, thickening wall and uh, filled with fluid. And uh, this tube uh, 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 approximate uh, to the uh, inguinal duct uh, laterally uh, to the uh, inferior um, epigastric vessels and correspond to the uh, indirect inguinal hernia uh, of the salpings uh, with uh, the salpingitis. And uh, we see uh, in the urinal sac uh, some fluid. In, in this image, uh, reconstruction in coronal, uh, we see the same uh, things and uh, confirm the diagnosis. Okay. And uh, the sagittal uh, reconstruction, uh, we see the same things. Uh, the fallopian tube uh, to the introduce uh, on the um, uh, inguinal duct laterally to the uh, uh, epigastric inferior epigastric vessels and a uh, neck of the hernial sac uh, it was the 26.1 uh, millimeters. Our diagnosis was a, a indirect a left indirect hernia <coughs> inguinal hernia containing fallopian tube uh, and salpingitis and the patient uh, was treated uh, with uh, surgery and hernioplasty. <coughs> A review of these uh, things, uh, an inguinal area is a protrusion of the intraabdominal structures into the inguinal uh, conduct. Uh, there are two major types of the inguinal areas correspond to indirect and direct. Indirect uh, was the 50% of the cases and indirect correspond uh, to the 25 uh, the fifth uh, of these protrusions. And uh, inguinal hernia uh, occurs when the abdominal contents protrude to the deep inguinal ring. Uh, uh, the hernia contains uh, emerge by the way of the superficial ring uh, and often descends into the scrotum or labia major. <coughs> In this image of ultrasound, uh, we can see the hernial sac laterally uh, to the uh, uh, inferior uh, uh, epigastric vessels. Uh, 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 what confirm uh, the indirect hernia? Uh, uh, direct hernias are not congenital and tend to occur in older patients uh, to result the relax relaxation of the abdominal muscles, uh, wall muscles, and the thing uh, the fascia. Uh, 
they are commonly bilateral and the, any condition that results to increase intra-abdominal pressure or abdominal collagen uh, may case a development and of uh, indial, uh, direct uh, inguinal hernia. Risk factors include uh, chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease, heavy lifting uh, and acidis, causing uh, peritoneal dialysis, smoking and collagen uh, vascular disease. Uh, uh, we have a key an, uh, an, an example uh, to the direct hernia. Uh, it's, it's this is lateral uh, medial, uh, uh, and this hernial sac uh, is uh, medially uh, to the uh, inferior epigastric vessels. <coughs> Femoral hernia are other, other types of hernia uh, exit below into the uh, inguinal ligament and protrude through to the femoral ring into the femoral canal. Uh, these hernias have often compressed the femoral vein. Uh, femoral hernia are relatively uncommon and have predilection uh, of a female patients, uh, four uh, to one uh, patient, uh, which show uh, to secondary to the dilatation of the femoral ring connect, uh, connected tissues thus to the hormonal and physical change of the pregnancy, but uh, this is not the case of our patients. Uh, for unclear reasons, femoral hernias are two, twice uh, as common as the right to the left side. <coughs> uh, of the evolu evaluation to the hernial sac, uh, they contain abruptly intraabdominal structures such as mesenteric fat, small bowel, and as, uh, ascending or descending colon, uh, urinary bladder, uh, or bodies, uh, appendix, and the ureters. Uh, the concert area uh, sac uh, may be become uh, incarcerated of, uh, or uh, strangulated. Um, uh, hernia is considered uh, to be incarcerated or irre irreductible if the contents cannot return to the abdomen either spontaneously or with compressions. Uh, strangulated hernia are char characterized by compromised uh, blood supply to the hernial contents. Uh, 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 <laughs> Signs of the potential ischemia uh, include a uh, free fluid uh, in the sac, uh, er hernial sac, organ wall, uh, edema, and absence of the bowel peristalsis uh, that results in a flaccid bowel. Okay, that is all. Thank you.